Good day, I'm Phil, the manager in charge of protected areas north of Kangaroo Ranges. Together with my team, we work for the protection of threatened species in this region. For our work, it is essential to understand the habitat preferences of the species we manage. For example, we need this information to decide which areas require special protection or to identify the best release spots for reintroductions. Although my team is excellent, we cannot survey the whole landscape, so we often rely on statistical models of species distributions, which we build based on our survey data. Species distribution models, or SDM for short, typically work by relating records of a species presence, or presence and absence, to relevant environmental covariates. One has to be very careful when constructing them, taking into account many aspects such as designing good sampling protocols and identifying important explanatory variables. But there is one issue I recently learned about, imperfect detection. I'm going to tell you a story that happened to us recently. We were working with a blue-spotted wild horse, a rare species that has been little studied. Although there have been a few sightings in lowland grasslands, most of its records come from alpine meadows. We were planning a new reserve and wanted to include good horse habitat in it. So we decided to model its distribution. We planned surveys carefully, visited a set of sites randomly selected across the region and recorded whether wild horses were detected or not. The SDM resulting from modeling this presence-absence data indicated a clear preference for high elevation grasslands. But shortly after our analysis was completed, I read a paper that made me reconsider our results. Uh, guys, I've been thinking, what if our survey methods did not ensure perfect detection of the species? Mm, now that you mention it, it was really difficult to see anything in the tall grassy lowlands. Maybe that's why we saw fewer horses at lower elevations. But hey, we recorded our data in the form of times to detection. Could that help anyhow? Yeah, that's right. There are statistical models that account for imperfect detection. And fortunately, the way we recorded our data will allow us to use these tools. And so we did, and found that our original estimates had been capturing the combined effect of occupancy and detection. Our new set of results shows that lower elevation areas provide a much more valuable habitat than we originally thought. So we have incorporated these into our reserve design. I do recommend reading this paper. It presents some key points that I found very interesting. It shows that the impact of imperfect detection depends on its relationship with the environment and how it is particularly problematic when detectability and occupancy are negatively correlated. It explains that modeling methods that only use presence records, such as Maxent, are also affected by imperfect detection, and demonstrates how modeling detectability can improve the performance of SDMs. In summary, I recommend thinking about detectability during data collection, analysis, and interpretation. This enables making more robust conservation and management decisions. My team and I will certainly do it from now on. That's all folks, safe modeling!